Hey, what a ride it's been on Dolphins today. What a hell of a season we had. You see the numbers right there. Over 12,000 new subscribers. And that's a testament to each and every one of you. So a huge thank you from the bottom of my heart. But hey, let's keep this train moving. We've got a lofty off-season goal. Can we get to 65,000 subscribers? I believe we can. So if you know a Dolphins fan, tell them about Dolphins today. We're pumping out Dolphins content each and every day, including live shows. And it's your one-stop shop for all the Dolphins draft coverage as well as free agency. So let's get it going on Dolphins today. What an important time of the year it is for the Miami Dolphins and really every team in the National Football League because the Reese's Senior Bowl is about to be underway and we've got your viewing guide as well as some players that have caught the attention of Miami Dolphins scouts and personnel for the week leading up to the Senior Bowl. So we'll recap that and talk about some of those individuals who have impressed and maybe making their way up Chris Greer's draft board as well as the rest of the Miami Dolphins because we know the draft is quickly approaching. And yes, it's an exciting time when you think about the Miami Dolphins actually having a first round pick. They'll be picking number 21 as of now unless some creative and crafty trades are made and then in round two they'll have the 23rd selection the 55th overall and unfortunately I do have to remind myself and everybody out there that the Dolphins do not have a round three nor round four pick after they forfeited those for the tampering violations and then that fourth round pick was part of that trade to Denver a few years ago to bring Bradley Chubb to Miami which I think was a great trade by the way back on the board in round five and uh, then again in round six as well as round seven. So six total picks in 2024 unless anything changes with those trades. But as it stands right now, I ask you the question, what position do the Dolphins need to prioritize in this year's NFL draft? There's a lot of thoughts here and not necessarily a wrong answer to this question, but I'm very curious what Dolphins today in the community has to say. So let me know down in the comments on what position the Dolphins need to address and prioritize through the draft. And here's how I look at it, because there are several position groups that you would say, hey, a little bit of depth added here, that's not a bad idea. But when you combine it with how rich this offensive line class is in the upcoming draft, it seems to make a lot of sense to me to really address the Dolphins' offensive line issues and build through the draft. And by issues, that can mean a lot of different things. Obviously, the injury bug was a big component of why the Dolphins started 12 different starting offensive line combinations in 2023. Guys like Teron Armstead was banged up. Obviously, Connor Williams with the season-ending knee injury. Robert Hunt banged up. And the consistency based on availability was just difficult for Mike McDaniel and the rest of the Dolphins organization to really come by. And so I think building this offensive line back up through the draft makes a lot of sense. And like I said, there's a lot of candidates in this offensive line class for the draft to be really excited about. And many of them are at the Senior Bowl and have played pretty well this week in different position drills and then, of course, as well in the actual Senior Bowl. So let's break it down, starting with Christian Haynes, who's an offensive guard out of UConn. And obviously, UConn, not exactly a college football power by any mean, but Christian Haynes, projected to be maybe a second-round pick, is a guy that you want to have your eye on because what he lacks in size at 6'2", 313 pounds, he makes up for in athleticism. And you see the season stats there, just one sack allowed in 2023. Now, Christian Hayes, I mentioned as possibly a second-round pick to keep your eye on, but there are a ton of offensive line prospects that are climbing up the draft board and may be very, very appealing for Miami with that 21st overall pick. We talked about Jackson Powers Johnson quite, quite a bit. Excuse me, quite a bit. Wow, wow, hang in there. There we go, quite a bit on this program. J.C. Latham out of Alabama, Talese Fuaga out of Oregon State, and, of course, Jordan Morgan out of Arizona. Let's talk a little bit about Jordan Morgan, the offensive tackle for Arizona. He's projected to be a late-round 
late first round pick. And when you look at the size, 6'5", 325 pounds, also pretty athletic, just two sacks allowed in 2023. And that Arizona program was really, really good this year. You got to give them a lot of props, big things going on there in bear down territory. But Jordan Morgan is a guy I could see the Dolphins targeting in the first round because, yes, he's listed as a tackle, could also play guard. Now, give you gave you two names to keep your eye on. And as we continue in today's program, we're going to have more and more names to keep your eye on from the Reese Senior Bowl as far as both offensive line prospects and a few other positions. But right now, I want to tell you about Factor, America's number one meal delivery service. Factor takes all the inconveniences out of cooking, meal prepping, cleaning up the dishes, this, that, and the other, and delivers fresh, never frozen, ready-to-eat meals straight to your door. And oh yeah, don't forget, they take just two minutes to heat up. That's the nuts and bolts of it. But what I also want to tell you about Factor is the convenience. That's right, just two minutes to heat up the delicious meals. And oh, by the way, they also have over 55 weekly add-ons. And some of these are underrated. You got add-ons like the smoothies, the snacks, those are delicious, as well as the 35 meals to choose from each week. And those include options like keto, calorie smart, vegan, veg and so much more. And I'm telling you guys, these are delicious gourmet meal quality and the convenience of it being delivered straight to your door. No dishes, no trips to the grocery store, no meal prepping. You get the idea. You can't beat it. So head to factormeals.com slash finschat50 for your 50% off your first order. I'm not even kidding. 55. Oh, let me say it one more time. A 50 burger. How else can I explain it? It's factormeals.com slash finschat50. Factormeals.com slash finschat50 and use that promo code finschat50 to get 50% off. And if you tuned me out, I understand. But hey, we love you and we care about you. So we're putting that link right in the comments and description of today's video. One click and you're there. Factormeals.com slash finschat50 for 50% off. Now, specifically on the offensive line, breaking it down from tackle, guard, and center, the center could be a position that needs to be addressed if Connor Williams doesn't re-sign with the Dolphins. Zach Frazier, the center from West Virginia, is a guy to keep your eye on. And his situation is a little bit more puzzling because he broke his leg in November of 2023 and wasn't able to finish out the season. But he is trending in that direction to be ready for the draft and doesn't expect the broken leg to impact his draft status. So with that said, Zach Frazier, no sacks allowed in 2023. And he's also a guy that is uh, regarded as relatively athletic for an offensive lineman and can get to the second level, something he did really well at West Virginia and blocks well in a zone scheme. And I think that's important to remember because the Dolphins obviously run a lot of zone scheme on the ground. So Zach Frazier, another offensive line that may fit in nicely to Mike McDaniel and Frank Smith's offense, a senior out of West Virginia. Now, here's my personal favorite. Hand up. I do like this for the Dolphins quite a bit. Jackson Powers Johnson, an athletic guard, can also play center out of Oregon. And several things to like about Jackson Powers Johnson. And again, if you follow Dolphins today, you know we've talked about him at length. But yes, he can play center. Yes, he can play guard. He's athletic. He can get to the second level. He's also a guy that played in a big-time program, played in big-time games at Oregon. And despite the wealth of experience that he has at the collegiate level, he's relatively young for being a true junior. So there's still some development that could take place physically. And that's one thing that has a lot of scouts really excited because he's already at what I would deem to be a first-round level, first-round caliber player, and there's potential for him to continue to develop in that sense. So Jackson Powers Johnson, another guy that has impressed at the Reese's Senior Bowl. And it's kind of interesting because his evaluation has been a little bit all over the place. Several different mock drafts, ESPN, Mel Kuyper, et cetera, et cetera, have him as a first-round talent. But then you take a look at some other mock drafts, according to Pro Football Focus, and he's more of a second-round talent. So with the kind of wide range as far as the evaluation is concerned with Jackson Powers Johnson, he's somebody to keep your eye on. But 
I personally am pretty high on the guy watching his motor, his athleticism, the way he can get to the second level. I think that's a guy that would look nice in the aqua and orange. So I ask you, though, we've given you four different offensive linemen that have impressed at the Senior Bowl. And I want you to pick one for me in the comments. If it's Christian Hayes, the first gentleman we talked about, go ahead and type one. Jordan Morgan out of Arizona, go ahead and type two. A little bit bigger of a body at six foot five. And Zach Frazier, one who suffered a broken leg for West Virginia in November, but should be ready to go and does not plan to have that as any type of negative impact on his draft stack. Type three. And for Jackson Powers Johnson, the center guard athletic big man out of Oregon, go ahead and type four. So just to summarize, put a, I'll tie a little bow on it for you. Christian Hayes, a guard out of UConn. Jordan Morgan out of Arizona. Zach Frazier, the center out of West Virginia. Jackson Powers Johnson out of Oregon, the guard and center. Those are the four offensive linemen I have my eye on. Now we move a little bit further out to the tight end. Yes, Ben Sinnott out of Kansas State is a guy that is projected to be in the third round type, and we know the Dolphins don't have a third round pick, but maybe if we're getting greedy, he slips to the fourth round. He could be a guy I would love to see in the aqua and orange because he's athletic, he loves football, he is what they call a grinder, and According to his draft comp, he is getting comparisons to Kyle Juszczyk. So athletic, he can also catch the ball out of the backfield, and maybe even you use him as an H-back or even a tight end. And say what you will about Durham Smythe, I think he had an okay season, but he's not necessarily known as a physical run blocker the way Ben Sinnott is, and he's a hard-nosed guy that, again, I think could add a little bit of an edge to the Miami Dolphins, and that's something they certainly need. And Given where he's projected to go, that's why it's so intriguing to me because maybe maybe he would fall down to the fourth round where Miami could make the move for him there. Or maybe, you know, Chris Greer figures out a way to obtain some picks to uh, maybe move up and get Ben Sinnott. But he's had a great career at Kansas State and, again, a guy that is very versatile in terms of the ways you could utilize him, just the way the 49ers utilize use check. Maybe a blocker and as an H-back, obviously catching passes as well. All three of those components excite me as a value add to the Dolphins' offense. Now, as we reminded you, it's been a terrific season here on Dolphins Today. We've gained over 12,000 subscribers to the largest Dolphins community on YouTube, and we appreciate that. So thanks so much for making that happen. And we continue to climb. We're getting closer to 56K, past the halfway mark with 55,507 currently. But let's get Wild. Let's get lofty and try and get that offseason goal of 65,000 bit by bit, subscriber by subscriber. I believe we can do it, so help make it happen. Subscribe to the channel, and if you haven't yet, tell a friend about it. And by the way, it's free. It's Daily Dolphins content. It's live shows throughout the week. We've got some fun stuff planned in February that includes some impressive, awesome giveaways since we don't have any watch parties in the near future when, like we always do on our watch parties, we make it worth your while, and that's the plan for live shows in February as well. So subscribe to the channel. You'll be glad you did. It doesn't cost you anything, and it keeps you updated on everything around the aqua and orange. My thanks to Jack Lauderay on the ones and twos producing today's show. Couldn't do it without him. As always, thanks so much for tuning in to Dolphins today, and have a wonderful morning, evening, afternoon, nighttime, whatever you're watching. We'll see you next time on Dolphins today.